하지만 방탄소년단이 진격한다면 어떨까? 용감하지? 용감한 반타소년단 인기 역시 용감하게 틱틱 때려 나 랩법을 깔리고 깔린 랩법을 들어 쓸어버려 가뿐하게 빅빅 때려 가서 완전 신들렸지 24-7 언제나 난 그것에 먹고 왔고 먹고 없는 애들이 오늘도 부려대는 척추추 두 발이 보란 듯이 경쟁이 올려 이 판에 주사표 내가 이렇게 추게 첫 타서 꽉 홈런 때려 자신 없다면 방망이를 내려 내 무대 끌림대로 슛에 맘대로 그래도 대중의 함성들은 내게 everybody and welcome to army review in our new format which will be audio only asmr <laughs> a there's no s m r maybe we need to insert some words in here so that we can be ASMR. bts army magical Wait, i already fucked up what is it army army singing music review <laughs> <laughs> nice i like it anyway we are um, continuing this series by doing an audio only. I spoke about this on our warm up video, but if you haven't seen that, we are changing to audio only because you guys liked the format for our Break the Silence commentaries. And it's easier for us to film these uh, without video so that we don't have to do it all in one go. 
Yeah, so we are doing them like this from now on. And that also means that we get to put the lyrics on the screen and we've come up with, well, Yami came up with an incredible new layout for us. Doesn't it look awesome? Because she's amazing. Please cheer her in the comments. Anyway, so we're ending Are oh, You Late 2 today. And uh, yeah, we're almost at the second album. And I thought this was really relevant as well because uh, both Too Cool For School and Oh Are You Late 2 came out in 2013. So these are the two albums that came out uh, right after their debut in their first half a year of of being on the scene kind of thing. So this is the, like, this is the end of the very, very first outputs that they'd put out, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just nice to reflect on like, how they were feeling during these times this year, the early debut and yeah. Yeah, we're almost at the end. Any comments on the album? Um, I think I agree with you that it's really nice to think about this album and the album that, or the EP that came before it, Too Cool for mm -hmm. School, as like those both came out in 2013. So mm -hmm. this was their first year, first half a year, Yeah, uh, you know, actually de debuting and being in the music industry. And in that time, they already dealt with so much crap yeah. and their ability to channel that into their music and create such, first off, fun music, mm -hmm. uh, music that has had longevity. Like this song, Attack on Bang Ten, otherwise known as The Rise yeah. of Bang Ten, is so mm -hmm. catchy. I still love it. And mm -hmm. um, I think even in Love Yourself tour, in their like medley of old songs, I think uh, sometimes this song got played as well. Yeah. Uh, and I loved hearing it. So the fact that the music they've made at this point in time in their first year was of such quality and had such mm -hmm. heartfelt messages and truth in them that made them still continue to be something that armies would want to hear and that BTS would want to perform all these years later is crazy. Like, yeah, from the start, they were incredibly talented. The proof yeah. is in the pudding. Yeah, and these like earlier albums, I really feel show their influence and like the influences they they had. I mean, like who they listened to and what types of things they wanted to put in their music and and them trying to like find their own musical identity. And even back then, they just did such an incredible job with their lyrics. And I feel like this album is made up of either fighting songs like that we're going to do it or like or rebellious songs, but um, in a way that is is not like immature or like it's very it's very mature it's a very like mm -hmm. accurate representation of teen angst but in a productive way in a I believe in myself kind of way and it's just and it's also just fun like you say like we have songs like if I rule the world attack on Bangtan powder gansan they're so fun and and light-hearted and in the music that they brought out back then I I just love it I really have enjoyed going through it all it's funny that you say like uh that they're you know mature and adults because <laughs> i just wanted to like uh mention so these lyrics and the translations and everything that we're going to be showing on screen for you guys is from the dual set website yes uh whoever um i don't know if it's a he or she or i don't know this, this person behind the site but they do an incredible job uh, mm -hmm. translating the lyrics and providing context and uh like in terms of pop culture uh, or historical culture for Korea so yeah. that you understand a little bit better uh, why BTS's lyrics are so multi-layered and intelligent and brilliant. Uh, yes. So we will uh, be linking her, or sorry, their stuff in the comments um, uh, in terms of their website for you to go check that out because they yeah, deserve definitely all, do. Of our, of all, all of our praise for the work yes. that they've done. So definitely. the thing that they pointed out here that I honestly didn't know until we started preparing for this review is that uh, the the name is a play on uh, the name of an anime. Um, yes, I didn't know this either. I just yeah. quickly want to say before we do, so we're on mm -hmm. Attack on Bangtan, which we just heard, um, and we'll move on to this uh, now. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll, we'll say our overall thoughts of it after you finish your point. Yeah, okay. So uh, Attack on Titan is an anime um, that I've watched a lot of, actually. Uh, and they're uh, they're saying that the the name is a very interesting name, but essentially it just means that these big titans are attacking um, people who live in in villages in the middle of nowhere. So in this case, they're they're you know it's a play on words, and they're saying no, actually BTS are the ones attacking. We're the ones who are going to be in charge. We're the ones who you mm -hmm. should fear. And mm -hmm. then 
the song is just kind of like we're really advancing fun. on you yeah it's like full of memes and full of things like that yeah yeah so my overall thoughts of this song is just uh it's just so fun like it's I think the reason they've still performed this in concerts is like even back when they had their first concerts this was the one where they really just go crazy on stage they just have so much fun with the audience and just jump around and go crazy and it's it's what it says in the lyrics isn't it and it's just such a hype and fun energetic song so that's my overall thoughts on it and I love the uh just it, it's very memeable it's very <laughs> silly and playful which mm -hmm. I love yeah so let me scroll down um <laughs> in the opening two words they've already got a meme reference yeah so I also just love that that is it it's um who's the one speaking at the beginning I think it's Yungi yeah 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 that sounds like his voice and like mm -hmm. this weird voice he's like yeah <laughs> what will happen if bts advances um mm -hmm. and then uh the explanation here from dual set is that there was a scene in a comic book series starcraft where you had one person say but what will happen if a dragoon moves and the other two characters say do ra and the first one completes the word by saying goon mm -hmm. so it's like three people combining to say a word i don't know it, it's it's like mm -hmm. the kind of things that i would expect to see in like power rangers <laughs> yeah like it's a uh, it's one of those things that like and then everybody would start using it it's kind of like where uh you know when you see those threads of armies like that we're doing like who are mm -hmm. you because you're not and then like filling in the lyrics of bts mm -hmm. like it's like one of those things that like everybody knows and then so then they've obviously gotten their um inspiration from this and you you know you are right because like this is the types of things i would expect teenage boys to to draw influence <laughs> from and to create music yeah. from but it's so cool and so clever and oh i don't fun. think it's bad i'm a teenage boy at heart i grew up yeah. watching all this stuff too so i'm like yes thank you there's music for the stuff that i like too yeah but it's just so cool how they uh this creative and can come up with these types of things mm -hmm. um so yeah then i they have the like marching choreo here as well, like advance like Benton, like oh, marching. And then damn. this bit at the end as well, when they say, uh, uh, aren't I brave? And that's the jingle, that bit. I mm -hmm. can't, I don't know what it is, but yeah. Um, the silly voice again. And I kind of felt like it's almost a way of saying, oh, we're just messing around, but we're not really messing around. Like we're messing <laughs> around, but we mean what we say though. <laughs> Yeah. Like it's it's silly, but it's it's, it's what also I would serious. From a bunch of young men. Exactly. Like, <laughs> oh well, what will happen if we get bigger? I mean, just kidding, but not really. <laughs> and like, aren't I brave? Like, oh, I'm just hyping myself up, but I kind of mean it though. Mm -hmm. And I love that the silly voice kind of implies that. Um, because the lyrics are like quite uh uh brazen. That's my new favorite word today, apparently. Yeah. But um Bangtan is brazen. Yeah, it, the lyrics are quite brazen, but then the the silly tone of it is like both sides of them, and I really like that it reflects that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I also uh, going back quickly about the uh, the bit where they say "bang tan son you and dan" that bit. Yeah, um, I think it, it kind of comes across like a rallying cry, don't you yes. think? Like it's like, oh, if uh, if we give you this chant to do, and then you can say it back to us, and that's exactly what it is in their live performances mm -hmm. it's like the armies chant it back to them and it's like this this war cry of bts and army of like we're coming we're gonna do this and that's kind of what the whole song is about like oh we're gonna we're gonna make it one day we're gonna we're gonna get there and yeah. they did yeah they were foretelling the future mm -hmm. so then the first verse is namjoon right yes so he's just kind of like flexing here and he's like, yeah, we're popular, like we're brave. We're like getting rid of all the has-beens and like doing it effortlessly. Lyrics so good as if they're possessed. Like, <laughs> I love that. And he's, he's, he's just like, we're cool, we're chilling, we're doing great. Um, and then he, the, he ends it with, uh, I think this is the end of his. Yeah, that scene, uh, nobody's with nothing are causing again today. Um, so that line I just love it's like oh we'll just put in that, that little dig there like we'll sit here and talk our shit and then we'll be like yeah and look at everybody else causing a scene keep being nobody is cool yeah I, it's so dismissive like mm -hmm. we're, we're we are on to bigger and better things yes and we're gonna have that attitude and we don't care it's like very condescending but I love yes. it <laughs> yes. agreed. agreed yeah okay so we have Hobie going second mm -hmm. 
So we, I, I thought that was relevant because we've mentioned a few times how he was always third, but yeah, we have mm-hmm. him second here. Um, so the first thing I wanted to say was uh, when he says, look at my first bat, I hit a home run. I love the choreo here. Like he actually has a bat and like, uh, does that like bit, you can't see me, but I'm doing it in my camera of, uh, <laughs> of hitting the ball with an actual bat. And I've always thought to myself, there must have been a time in rehearsal when he whacked one of those on the head with that bat because <laughs> they are way too close to not have gotten hit at least one time. And probably way too enthusiastic about doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I just love that. Same. Uh, da, 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 da. And, and I just like the whole metaphor. Again, this is something I would expect from like a teenage like a young mm-hmm. guy like sports yes. references like look at my bat i hit a home run if you're not confident put down your bat yeah i shoot a basketball like it's all just, just sports these sports references, references. Yeah. yeah and, and then, then they, they reference slam uh, dunk yeah slam dunk and like it says here side note sugar's favorite and i remember him in the comic book episode of run bts when he was like slam dunk <laughs> and he loves slam dunk so and uh yeah and then the fact that they used one of the main character of that uh of that manga's li- famous lines of uh, the left hand is simply assisting. And he says, I proved that all the mic is simply assisting. So it's like, yeah, I'm the main character of like this badass uh, manga series, but with my mic. It's just, ugh, I love it. It's just so cocky. It's 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 the thing that we like from, the, I don't know. It's just, I you're right. It's cocky. And I'm just like, I love seeing them yes. just being like red blooded young mm-hmm. men. Mm-hmm. Competitive and, and fierce. Yes. Yes. Yep. So then we have the uh, pre-chorus, which is, is everyone ready to go crazy? Is everyone ready to jump if they can? Concentrate your strength in the solar plexus and breathe slow and deep. Is everyone ready to go crazy? Is everyone ready to jump if they can? If so, scream from now on. And I just put in my notes, and so describes the life of an army. <laughs> <laughs> yes, accurate. Very accurate. And this is the bit in the uh, the concert where it just starts to go wild and you really feel the energy through the screen when they do this. And it's like, uh, I think it's Tay who's like growling at this point and he's like, Sonny, Jilla. and then everybody starts jumping and just losing it. And it's mm. so much fun and energetic. And I bet they can't do it as easily now as when they were younger as go absolutely crazy like they used to. <laughs> uh, I'm oh. sure it makes them feel young again, though. Like it's True. a callback to a time when you just were like, I know a lot of uh, journalists nowadays like to say, oh, when they're together, they have like chaotic puppy energy. Yeah. But I think it's it was even more back then. Mm-hmm. So definitely this is, this is them like getting a chance to revisit that time of like this is the song they wrote in the middle of their youth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so the chorus is uh it's just fun. I think it's it's great to repeat a concert. The one line I love the most is, if you don't know us, you should know about us properly. It's like, <laughs> oh, if, you, if you're not familiar with us yet, then you should probably learn because you're going to be behind soon. Yeah, <laughs> go do your homework. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then they have a great la la la. Turn it up. La 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 la. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we don't need music here. We'll be your music. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So... Do you have anything about the chorus or should we move on? Uh, no, we can move on. This song just okay. like has me pumped up just talking about Same. it. Same. <laughs> so JK's uh, verse is actually my favorite. And I think this might be my favorite of his rap verses in general, to be honest. Um, he's like, oh, our style is doing more dream. Like reference, call back. Mm-hmm. And then the bit where he says, we step on the backs of seniors on the stage. And then in the background, it's like, I'm sorry, man. Like that's just so great. And in the choreo, he steps on Hobie, I think it is, and like as he's saying this. And it's just so again, so brazen and so like, oh yeah, even those who have been in this for longer, we would step on you on this stage. Sorry. Yeah. Well, I think it's also acknowledging, didn't they get criticism of like, oh, you're I don't know, you're copying stuff that other people who are your seniors in the industry have done before. Oh, you need to know your place, blah blah blah. And they were and a lot of it was unwarranted and unjustified criticism mm-hmm. that they got. And here they're like, you know what? Fine. Yeah, that's what we do. We step mm-hmm. on the backs of seniors on stage yep. because we're that much better than them. Mm-hmm. And the other thing that Dulce has put here is like that it's a reference to No More Dream choreo. And, you know, that's quite funny as well because it's like JK's the Macne and he's stepping on the backs of his seniors who are older than him in the No More Dream choreo. So it has that double meaning as well. Mm-hmm. You mean Jimin? Because it's Jimin who Oh, yeah. It. Oh, it is Jimin who does it, isn't it? Oh, yeah. never mind. But, but JK does carry oh. him, and, and Jimin is still younger than almost all of them. True. 
So our reaching the top is a matter of time. We've said this a few times, like how bold they were to make these kind of statements in 2013 when they were just getting started. And it probably was quite frustrating for them that it took them longer than they probably initially thought it would. They'd be like, we're great and we work so hard, so we're going to immediately crush everyone. And then and not having the results they wanted straight away. Um, like that's what Yungi was saying recently about how they they were doing well, but to them at the time, it felt like, they weren't because Especially they didn't considering, like immediately yeah, up. They wanted to be bigger yes. than where they were and they felt that their talent and like they had mm-hmm. the way to do it. I also think when you say things like this and you make these kind of bold statements, it's motivation for you to yes. make them reality. Like because you don't But it's eat your pressure. Life. Exactly. Because if you yeah. don't do it, yeah, it'd be embarrassing. Like people not even what other people, but you yourself, like you've made this statement and then you didn't fulfill it. Like I love this is just like, again, flexing, like my rap banquet is sensuous. Once again, Yoongi, I'm pretty sure this is Yoongi, uh, is, is talking about how sensual his tongue is. So He's, hear it once again. He has an oral fixation, doesn't he? <laughs> he really does. Um, uh, so then I love at the end of this, he's like on the stage of Manly Man style. And I was thinking, is this a, a reference to Boy in Love, which is their next title? Because Manly Man is the Korean is the Korean title. So are they like mm-hmm. putting in this little clue to uh, Boy in Love here? It could be. Can... That could be. I, I like that. So uh, then we have the bridge. Uh, I'm just going to read this out. The moment I go onto the stage, Hold on, where are uh, you? go down, because this is the chorus again. Oh, gotcha. Here okay, we go. go ahead. So the moment I go onto the stage, I feel your cheers. Please stay there forever like that, because even if I die like this, there will be no regret. And I, I think this is a very significant bridge. And I think this theme follows them throughout their entire journey, even up until now. Mm-hmm. Like the fact that like they kill themselves on stage and but it doesn't matter because even if you die like that, it doesn't like there won't be any regret because this is the moment that I'm happiest. This is the moment I feel alive. This is and what they want. I want yeah, and I don't want to lose it and I'm afraid that I'm going to. And it links into songs like uh, for young forever and then moving on to uh, see and all these fears that they have of, of losing this chair and it's like even though it's hard even though I work myself to the bone like this is what I want and it's just interesting to me that they still have this exact same mentality seven years down the line mm-hmm. of their feeling towards performing well I feel like this is the desires of true performers this is what mm. they want you know, the thing that makes them happiest is to perform in front of other people and hear other people's uh, cheers and praise. And, you know, it's like what we talked about, how right now, Bing Bang Conda Live, it's just harder for them to mm-hmm. perform without yes. an audience because you want that feedback that you're doing a good job. And yeah, I agree it's with the you cheers. that this, this is their, like a fundamental pillar of who they are mm-hmm. and that they're Definitely. going to push themselves because they want this. Yes. And like when you see all those things backstage of them, like with oxygen masks and on the floor and that's what they choose because they want, that, that. They want to give it their all. And, and, and that's what most performers, like you say, they do. They run their body until the, like the brinks yeah. of exhaustion because it's everything to them. Yeah. Um, and it's not just them. Athletes do that. Yes. Anybody in any profession where they're very passionate yes. about it, they will sacrifice other things comforts in their life Mm -hmm. like enough sleep enough um energy uh enough like whatever in order to attain that one step closer to their idea of perfection or their ideal state of where they want to be that's just Mm -hmm. how humans are i don't exactly i don't think there's any reason to ever look at them being exhausted behind stage and go oh no like they're being taken advantage of no they're the ones choosing to do that they've been Mm -hmm. choosing to do this from the very beginning and they will continue to choose to do this until they no longer can yeah because that's just how we feel about life and the decisions we make and the sacrifices we make for what we love Mm -hmm. and yeah i just i I like this bridge because it's it's a, a much more serious feel than the rest of the song it like it mellows out we've got like the the uh calming singing of uh jk here and it's 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 a more serious feel of yeah i'm having fun and i'm talking all my shit and saying how we're going to rise but like this is this is what matters this is the point is performing and yeah i love that yep. uh i think that's everything i have to say yeah. about the song and then they just repeat the song until the end mm-hmm. uh the one last thing i had is have you seen that video of tay when he does the nico nico ni thing 
in concert Mm -hmm. oh my god it's so funny it's adorable (laughs) oh it makes me laugh that's it yeah shall we move on to the next song yes That was Powder Gansan. And like to start us off, I will just say I think this song is genius. It's so good. I love it. It's it makes me so happy when I think about it for so many different reasons. And it, it's gotta be one of the songs that I could talk the most about that I have so much appreciation and love for. Um and the fact that this was like uh well, we'll get into it. It's just uh, it's incredible. I adore it. Mm-hmm. Something I wanted to say before we started talking about it is that there's a note here from Dulcet yes. where she says that there was an original version of this track um, mm-hmm. featuring the three rap line members and it debu- It like was released two years before their debut and it was very well received by the public and then she goes yes. on to explain like uh, why it was or like where yeah, it was, it was on TV, well. the news and mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah, definitely read through uh, Dulcet's yeah. notes on this because they're yeah. great. Uh, this song was a, an opportunity for Koreans to celebrate their culture and the different ways that they all have of speaking, all the quirks that are, uh, you know, regional. Um, we, we've talked before about uh, Saturi and um, how that plays a significant role in how Koreans communicate with each other. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just think that even back before they debuted, 
BTS members were already tapping into this this ability to to hone in on like well what is identity what is something that I truly care about because mm-hmm. if if I care about it as as a person in BTS then there's a, a lot more chance that other people will care about it and that is how yes. you connect with other people yeah completely and like the fact that they came up with this when they were so young just speaks volumes to their talent their creativity their worldview their their social their awareness of the world yeah yeah their awareness like, of the culture that they live in mm-hmm. and so i just wanted to point out before we start this um that we're not going to do this like we normally do by going through the things chronologically because there, um, I mean, we won't talk about all the specific lyrics and things because there are so many Korean cultural references that we just can't speak on. Like, it's just impossible for us mm-hmm. to do so. So I would re- highly recommend fully reading through Dorset's uh, lyric translations. And I mean, uh, DK, DK TV, even though I don't really agree with everything they've done, they have a good video on this song um, <laughs> that explains it very well. So I'd recommend uh, watching that as well if you want a, an actual Korean perspective of these things, because that's something we can't provide for you. But what we can do is talk about our experience to this song and our understanding of this song from a foreign perspective I guess Mm -hmm. so yeah that's what we will do also it says in a dual sets notes that Tay said he knew about BTS before signing with Big Hit and and joined the team because of this song I don't know apparently he thought that BTS would be a three-member hip-hop group so so did he join because he wanted to be a rapper (laughs) (laughs) oh okay right Uh, can we move down to this map quickly Mm -hmm. so the first thing to point out is where all of these members fit in so let's uh go to this the red the red circle yeah so the red circle is where namjoon and jin are from and in this area of seoul and around like surround the surrounding areas is where the traditional korean is kind of spoken and you can think of this in regards to um like my my british english is like a typical uk english i speak a very typical uh, accent so that's kind of like the the way in in korea i guess you would say that's the traditional Mm -hmm. korean um and then moving down down the map where are we going what circle to to the bottom we are going to the orange circle yes so this is guanju where uh hobi is from and on the other side in the purple circle we have daegu and busan and tae and yungi are from daegu and jimin and uh cookie are from busan so that's where the members kind of originate from and in each of these different three circles there are different accents regions and like stereotypes or traditions or types of ways of speaking about things things that they hold in high regard and and so they find a way in this song to express all of these different areas that they represent and it's done so masterfully Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's done in a fun way and in a way mm -hmm. where they don't make fun of each other they just point out the quirks that they have yeah like they they, they're proud of their region and they they want to like like when you're like oh well this is what i've got well this is what i've got and and it's it's very telling because even in uh, the uk for example where i'm from you have uh the four countries but then even in like england itself there are all different regions with all different accents you have like Geordie accents Scouse accents uh like Yorkshire accents and all of these different regions if you don't know the, the mm. just, it's just examples all of these regions have different way of pronouncing things have have different cultural references you'll say like oh people from Newcastle are friendly because of like their culture and and so it's just really interesting to me to learn about Korea and Mm -hmm. their regions through this song and and them talking about it made me do like loads of extra research loads of like understanding of the different regions and their cultural history and heritage and I I just loved learning all about that it was Mm -hmm. so interesting Mm -hmm. yeah I think that's fascinating because there's if you're an outsider and you're not actively learning a language or Uh, reading through I don't even know if you could really learn from a cultural book but there are certain things that you don't get a chance to know or to learn as easily if you are a foreigner to a country Mm -hmm. and especially one if there's not a lot of uh, literature in your in the language you speak for you to Mm -hmm. understand so songs like this 
um, summarize so many differences so cleverly and so quickly and um, allow a conversation to be started by people like these translators, like Dual Set, who start explaining, well, here's what this means and here's that mm -hmm. reference so that you can then have a, a platform to jump off of and keep learning more. Yeah, exactly. I think that's very helpful. Scrolling down a bit more, uh, yeah, to here. So in Dorset's uh, notes, she talks about the choreo here. So in this choreo, I, I'm pretty sure it is. Somebody told me it was, but uh, I'm going to say they now because just in case I'm wrong. Um, so they say here uh, about the choreo. And I want to talk a lot about the choreo as well because it's so much fun and it's I love it. And you have basically uh, Tay, Yoongi, Jimin and jk on one side of the like it's like a dance battle almost and then you have hobie by himself but then like june and jin come in to join him on his side and like they're kind of battling it out between the two of them in their choreo and then they all like kind of come together in the chorus and and i just mm -hmm. i love that as well it's again it's like this it's it's all done in in a fun way in a light-hearted joking way of like oh i'm better than you no i'm better than you and and even that's reflected in their choreo which is so great mm -hmm. yeah I really like um, this song too. There's a lot of pride. There's uh -huh. a lot of pride for their region, for their country, and for their language mm -hmm. reflected in the song. Yeah. So the last thing on these notes here, uh, the dual set says, is uh, they translate um, not only the uh, Korean to English, but they also put uh, the satori into standard Korean. Um, so like there's all of these differences that they've done incredible by the way but it just reminded me so if you haven't seen in their like old v lives uh jimin and tay used to do specific v lives of them talking in the dialects from their regions daegu and busan and then translating it into traditional korean and <laughs> so it just reminded me of that i loved those v lives if you haven't seen them you should watch them they're like quite near the start they do like these classes on on satori and where they come from and how it translates into traditional korean because they have all these slang words and things like that so that's really interesting oh that's cool i didn't know that i should check that out yeah they're cool okay shall we begin yes Yo, once again, big big hit represent. I don't think I ever knew that they were talking about big hit. <laughs> so yeah, in the chorus, the main thing to point out is they just they're, they're talking about all these different regions, and then this first line here that's hey hey what are you saying? It's like the ma ma morika no that bit. Mm -hmm. That is Busan Satori, um, because. Uh, there's a certain way that you can tell, and I've learned to pick up on the different types of satori. And Busan is, and, and Daegu a lot of the time as well, is is quite like confrontational sounding. <laughs> like it, it's it's yeah. quite harsh and like masculine sounding. And it, it has stereotypes of being like what the cool guys use. And whenever I've watched K-dramas and things like that, it's like the gangster characters always talk in like this this type of satori because mm -hmm. it's like the cool guy, the masculine guy. And they talk about it later on in the song as well. And then the second part of the chorus, uh, the bit at the end, uh, the tell them we are here, we're freaking cool. That bit's done by Hobie in his in his satori and it goes up at the end. So like the sentences that he uses uh, raise in their, inflection. I can't think of the word now, inflection, yeah, at the end of the of the, the lines. So you can pick up on his, what his satori is by looking out for that. Um, so that's just a couple of differences that mm -hmm. like I've now been able to pick up more when I watch dramas or when I hear them speak and like I can tell now yeah. which uh, kind of satori they're speaking in, which again, like this song just really taught me so much about all these things that I never would have known. Mm -hmm. Agreed, agreed. And that I also learned that from the song and I was like, you can't teach someone this through a book. Yes. You have to, like, language is spoken, you need to hear it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, even the commitment to watch, like, a K-drama, plenty of us, like, me don't have the time, so, but I can mm -hmm. listen to a song and then on my free time I can read about and, and watch things that explain, like, well, this is what this means and this is what that means. So mm -hmm. it's such a good jump off point to learn more. Yeah. So we have the verses. I'm not going to go into the verses. If you want to say anything about them, then feel free. Uh, but no, no. Yeah, I don't, don't want to go into those. To talk about any of this. Yeah, like it. It's there's so many notes on here. Please go and read through them. It's really interesting. Um, and there's all these different references. But it's basically just 
going back and forth between these two regions at the bottom of the map that we had, the one where Hobi was from and the one where the four of them were from. Uh, yeah, there we go. So those two regions, according to DK, DK TV, have had a history of like fighting against one another or like conflict. There's conflict between these two. And, and so in the first part of this song, it's just the two of them saying, well, we have this. Well, we have this. Well, you're not like us because of this. And uh, like basically trying to win, trying to win the battle. Um, and so it ends with them. The one bit I wanted to read out was, yeah, keep going. Go, 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 go. <laughs> yeah keep going some of the stuff is really interesting too so about, interesting yeah uh, really recommend it where am i going to <laughs> uh yeah it's even further than this this is all wow. the the first verses because of that there's that I'm many okay yeah i know <laughs> there's like that many different references after this chorus that's bit i want yes this bit up a little... part. no up, up, up the bit before namjoon this? yeah yeah so um, this bit here is like the end of their, like what happens is these two have been going back and forth between one another. And then Yoongi and Hobie start having this conversation where they, they, they're they not even like rapping or singing anymore. They're just talking to each other. And it's like, oh, Hyung's been thinking this is Yoongi. And honestly, I think men from Gyeongsang province are the popular ones. And that's the ones where he's from. And then Hobie's like, that's not it. And then he's like, I said it is. I said it isn't. I said it is. <laughs> and then uh, I think Namjoon comes in and he's like, oh, for goodness sake, it's my time. Um, and he breaks it up here. And then he talks about uh, being in Seoul, and Seoul state of mind, which was cool. Is that like a reference to Empire state of mind? Mm -hmm. Not sure, but... Um, he so he explains in his verse about the previous two types of accents. So he says, "Yeah, I'll admit it. The accents are cool." Um, and he says, "Gyeongsang province makes any man want to use it because that's the masculine one, the cool one." And then uh, Jola province words are so friendly. Once I speak those, I become happy. That's Hobie's uh, way of speaking. And it, and then he says, but "Why keep fighting? In the end, they're all Korean. Look up the same sky that we face like this. Though it's a bit cringy, everything is great. We can all communicate, right?" And like, so he comes in. He's basically like, "Yeah, well, out of all of you guys, like accents might be cool, but mine is the clever one, and and you don't like this. Mine is the standard that is used for everyone else. But at the end of the day." I'm good for this thing, you're good for this thing, you're good for this thing, but we all speak the same language, we all look up at the same sky and exist in the same country, so like we can all be one and, and understand each other's differences whilst that is being such a united. Nanjing, that is such a Nanjing thing to say. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just, I think it's absolutely brilliant because it's so reflective and mature like this song is so mature and it's saying like How we all have they? reasons well they even wrote this before debut I two know. years so before how debut how old were they when they debuted this when they released this oh, i think namjoon was how old was he when they 20 debuted? when they debuted or 19 when they debuted i think 19 i think jen was the only one who was 20 okay so 19 so he would have been about 17 him and hobie 17 yoongi 18 so very young at this yeah. point and yeah, it's just basically saying like we can all understand one another and and be proud of what we're proud of and and recognize our strengths, but we're we're also all the same. So let's just communicate with one another in our own special and unique mm -hmm. ways. And that is so incredibly diverse and open, <laughs> and not just to their country, but to their walks of life. Like at the end of the day, they they travel the world, they experience so many cultures, and their mindset. I feel has been shaped from from this point of like appreciating difference and, and understanding mm -hmm. what these types of unique qualities are and like yeah. connection they, they've taken this mindset that they had at this time when they were so young and you know they've applied it to um, yes to other people i just think it's such a namjoon thing or like to for, for all of them to just be like celebrating the differences of their different kinds of culture uh, mm -hmm. wanting to promote pride and in their heritage and the way their language has changed over time and all of these different accents and then at the end saying keep your accents keep your differences that's what makes you special mm -hmm. but we like let's all get along and let's all remember that being different isn't a bad thing we're all united in the fact that we all live in one place yeah exactly and yeah i just think that this is it's evident why it, it got so much attention why it was on the news like could you imagine like all oh, these kids have come up with this really like creative way of 
of explaining Korean heritage and everything mm. like that. And you can really understand it. And the, the other thing I want to point out just before we move on is who thinks of writing a rap or a song in accents, like dialogue and having these different, like different ways of saying things, like they, they specifically use uh, different accents and uh, because there's like mm. it it makes me think of music in general of, of ways rappers use different voice tones some have like really uh exaggerated tones some just talk some use auto-tune some use kind of like a melodic rap and I've never heard a song before that has incorporated accents and specifically more than one accent like in the actual song. And to me, that is so creative. And mm -hmm. this whole song just speaks to BTS's incredible creativity, uniqueness, and, and their approach to community and, and diversity. And that's why I think I said at the beginning that this song just really speaks to who they are and who they were and what made them so special. And that's why I love it so much. It who has it all. doing it like BTS? Yeah. No one. This is an intellectual song. Exactly. It provokes so much thought and so much culture and history. Like we haven't even delved into most of it. They talk of like the Huarang, which is the, the the nights of certain areas and and different foods that come from certain areas and mm. different historical events that came from certain areas. It's so intellectual. And they did this at such a young age. And I just think it it shows if you want to know why BTS made it, listen to this song. Okay, and so our final song of this episode is the outro, Love in School. And this is also the final song on the album. Mm, so, I love this song. Yeah, what I've are your thoughts on it? Head. I've had it stuck in my head all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've been singing it. <laughs> I love this song because it is both like a teaser of the topics and like that they'll cover in their next album but also yep. there's references in the lyrics throughout this little short piece to a bunch of things that they've done in this album yes. and i just think it's so clever yeah it's, it's a perfect outro by ending this album and then kind of segueing into the next like because these three all combine together to be one project really the the school era of too cool for school or elite two and and school love affair so it's a great segue from one to the other um so yeah before we get into the lyrics can we play the very first like five to ten seconds again please mm -hmm. Yeah, so what is that noise, right? I need to know. I, I can hear I can hear the vinyl sounds and like the but the, the high pitch noise, like it's like they're starting like a, a tape or something. Yeah, the beep. Like Isn't that a recording I, sound? Like the sound of I, something being recorded? Like in like in one of those old studios? Oh like, yeah, it could be like a vintage recorder. Like yeah. when you press on yeah, I think you're right. Like when you press on a tape recorder and then it starts recording. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was trying to figure it out <laughs> for yeah. ages. I really um, like um, that this is the same. It's the same. No, the next album starts with the same thing, right? Yes. Kind of. Again, another reference. 
Mm-hmm. Which also just speaks to the fact that they prepared so much music ahead of time. They didn't just work mm-hmm. album to album. They yeah. were, from the beginning, trying to sh- have a journey through all of their music yeah. and to tell a story. And isn't that freaking awesome? Amazing. The and the fact that beginning. they've stuck with it. Because one of my favorite things about BTS's albums is the journey it takes you on, not even just in one singular album, but through eras. It's so creative. And yeah, exactly like you say, like the fact that they did this even with their first three like mini albums is so cool and experimental. And yeah, it's mm-hmm. awesome. They really yeah. liked these static noises uh, in their old songs as well, like the vinyl <laughs> sounds, which I love. I think it gives it that really nice, homey, cozy feel. It gives um, it an old school feel. Like, yeah. like they're try- They're not trying to be flashy. I feel like it's like a callback to their hip love of hip hop. Yeah. And, you know, like those old noises. And they're like, yeah, like mm-hmm. we belong here. Yeah. And this is this is very old school R&B sounding. Um, yeah. The, yeah, the title. So it's Love in School. And then we move on to School Love Affair. And, and this is the song which is like a bit about like school crushes. And, and so, yeah, it sets up for the album really well. And so the last thing I wanted to say before we start talking about it is I'm pretty sure that this is the very first vocal line song and it's the first time where we actually really hear the vocals because most of the other songs it's just the choruses and maybe the odd bridge here and there because it was very much rap chorus rap chorus rap chorus Mm -hmm. like because it was very hip-hop heavy and and so this is the first song where each of the vocalists get their own individual segments and you can really start to distinguish the different tones of their voices Mm -hmm. and like they get they get these big segments and they can be more soft the the vocals just feel like they were given a platform here and and Mm -hmm. for anyone that tried to say oh it's just rappers with like people singing a chorus like this was the first time when their their voices were really utilized and I think they sound incredible in this song agreed agreed that's why it's so catchy it's so smooth they're singing yeah and that's why i have the stupid chorus stuck in my head on repeat (laughs) and you know i might even go as far as saying this is my second favorite vocal line song uh we did yeah my first is dimple but we did a video me and amir did a video uh it will probably go back out on the channel at some point once it's re-edited but we did a video on our favorite underrated songs um and my most underrated unit song uh, was this outro eleven school? Really? I yeah, I really adore it. I think it's the vocals and the sound of it. It's the type of music I used to listen to when I was like a, a teenager. It's very mm. chill R and B. Their voices sound beautiful on it. Each one of them has like significant moments, and I just think it's very underrated. Even and it's short. I wish it was longer. I know. I was about to say. I wish it was longer. It was like mm-hmm. a minute and a half, I think. So let's talk through the lyrics then. I just love you. <laughs> love this oh, song. baby. Same, it's just so soothing, isn't it? It's so it's relaxing. So and, yeah. And plus, like, if I was a girl their age when this song came out, I would fall head over heels in love with them. Yeah, <laughs> like, be like, okay, I just want to love you too. That, that, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, like, it's so sweet and romantic and smooth and they sound so great. Can I uh, make a side note really quick? Mm-hmm. So these these lyrics are dropped into word. I'm very confused about why this character in particular is not misspelled, but everything else is. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah this one is fine, <laughs> but this this word is misspelled. So if we have any uh, Korean speakers or readers in the house, can you let me know why some of these words are just fine <laughs> and some aren't? Yeah, that is very weird. <laughs> so anyway, sorry. Resuming our <laughs> yeah. So um, the things I wanted to point out were, so we have a lot of references, like you said, to their earlier songs in this album and in the previous album. We've got mm-hmm. Dream. Uh, oh, yeah. Dream. Dream. Let me highlight them. Highlight these. Yeah. Dream. And then we have Coffee, which uh-huh. we spoke about was on this album. Uh, if I Ruled the World is mm-hmm. here. Tell Me It's Not Too Late is here, which is a reference to the album. They also say Save Me, which... <laughs> probably was unintentional but you know um and yeah we have dream again and then obviously we have love which is in reference to the next album so it's just really cool it's a nice little neat way of like giving the album yeah, a a blurb like when you read a book and it has the blurb mm-hmm. and it's like here is an overview so they should yeah. have just written these lyrics on the back cover of their album for people who basically to buy it. 
Yeah. Or it's like one of those <laughs> things that people uh, make up of, of BTS's titles. Like, it was a spring day and I was on my way to work when, you know, the title. When I realized, <laughs> once when I got a text, oh, are you late too? And I responded yeah. back, not today. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But BTS made a song out of this. <laughs> Oh, they, they did this they did this again with uh was it outro her yeah because yeah they, they, they answer said, i call you her because you're yeah. my tear yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so they they made the reference to those albums there mm -hmm. um but yeah but i just i love the song same and i also like the like the whole message of the song it seems like someone who's yearning for their crush their love interest and it, they're like letting it be take over their mind mm -hmm. and then the next album is about love when you're a student like when you're in yeah. school and they you know have all those songs in that album that are like along these lines of someone being driven crazy by their crush yeah like this very much love. feels yeah. yeah this very much feels like a first love of like i've i have this girl that i i love and i want i want to be in oh a relationship boy. with her oh boy but yeah i mean they usually include uh did they, did they say girl they, here yeah they include the oh, opposite yeah. sex girl. in their early in their early albums whereas then they became gender neutral which i love about mm. their later songs is that it's it's always gender neutral but yeah in their early songs they they said girl um but yeah i it seems like that first love that first crush of like look, gazing at somebody from across the hallway at school and then the next I album just, is like I just want to love you <laughs> yeah <I> love you. <laughs> exactly. everything feels like a dream since I saw you and then I think it uh Dorset hasn't translated it at the end but uh JK's speaking line I think it's something like hey girl do you want to go out with me uh, yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think that's that's what it ends with and then so the end of the album is like hey you want to go out with me and then the next album is all about like trying to get that love and yeah. yeah. Although, you know, for, for the record, this song could also be ARMY singing to BTS. Oh, definitely. I just want to love you. <laughs> it feels like a dream. Um, I, I want blah, blah, blah. I'd have you next to me. Yeah. yeah. If I ruled the world, I'd have you next to me. Tell me it's not too late. I'm mm -hmm. only waiting for you. Yep. Hi, BTS. It's us, ARMY. Where are we you? We still feel this song <laughs> for you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the last thing I wanted to say was... I've already mentioned how like each of their voices it just stand out so beautifully. Uh, but again, Jimin's high note at the end of this song, oh, yeah. like in his in the early songs when they just add that really incredible Jimin high note right at the end, mm -hmm. and it's just oh, I love it so much. Yeah, they stopped doing it, but I liked it they too. Did. It was like yeah. a, a very nice contrast and texture. Mm -hmm. We had it in Stay Gold though, in the, in the most yeah. recent song, yeah, yeah, we got right. one. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> Yeah. Is it only for Japanese releases? <laughs> what about the rest of us? Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I just really liked that the vocalists were given a platform here uh, to have their own their own song, and and it it was really nice to hear that. This is the first time we get to fully appreciate their mm. beautiful voices. Yeah, and, and it's a great segue into the next, the next album. album where we will hear more of them. Yes, we will. But yeah, that is it for today's episode. So I hope you guys like the new format and have enjoyed our lyrical discussions. I think I quite, I definitely prefer having the lyrics on screen, really. It's, it's nice. Yeah, me too. Yeah. All right, guys. See you next time. Bye.